everyone. I'm Karen, Karen Pimbley, and I'm the Head of Arts Management Training at the Royal Welsh College of Music and Drama. Thank you very much for joining us this evening for the Q&A. It's lovely to see so many of you with us. So you'll see that there are some other people in the uh, screen, um, as well as yourself. And so we've got a number of students, student, prospective students and our current students on the course and some of the administration team here as well. And so four students are going to talk a little bit about the course and what being in college is like for them. So I'm going to hand straight over to them so they can share their experiences with you. So I think they know the order that they're going in. But first up is Natalie. And if you've got any questions for them, just sort of make a note of them and then you can ask them at the end when everyone's done their their presentations over to you nat great hi everybody my name is natalie regal i am a full-time arts management student uh, i am on the general management track so we have three tracks on the course you can do general management uh, you can do creative producing which isaac will talk about in just a minute and uh, we also have orchestral management but i chose the general management track because i wanted kind of the full scope of everything um you can also hear that i'm not from the uk i'll talk about my experience as an international student in just a minute but being a full time student on the course, um, I chose to come here because I, I wanted the practicality and I wanted it uh, quickly. I wanted to go ahead and have these tools that this degree um, gives and I wanted to have it in a year. So um, the program has been fantastic so far. It's really practical knowledge. It comes in three terms. So in the fall, what we do is we uh, have only classes Monday through Wednesday with a private study day on Thursdays. So in the fall, we studied fundraising, access and participation, uh, audience development and communication. Um, we studied the creative sector and we studied management and leadership theory. It was really great in the fall just to be in classes. You really get to know your cohort and uh, really gain a lot of knowledge. Then in the spring, you do a part-time placement as well as classes, typically people do their part time placements one or two days a week. I'm doing mine one day a week over the 12 week term. And then you have classes on Tuesdays and Wednesdays. So the classes this term include international arts management, finance, and we have something called the inspire series, which I've loved. Uh, it's where guest lecturers come in and, and talk about their positions and their current roles and how they got there. Then in the summertime, what you do is you are in a full time placement, you do 180 hours of work for uh, an arts organization. And what I really love about the course thus far is it feels like it's working you up to getting into the creative sector and getting used to being in a job. So you start in the fall with only classes in the spring, you move to placement and classes and then summer your full time placement. So by the time you're done with summer, you're like ready to go into the world. And I love that. The pacing has been really great. Um, it's not ever been overwhelming. Um, and I feel like I'm getting all of the tools that I feel like I wanted and some that I didn't know I needed, but uh, I'm happy to have. Uh, as an international student, um, it's been really easy to move to Cardiff. I'm originally from Alabama. I lived in New York City the past five years. And um, it's truly Cardiff is just a fantastic place to live. You can walk anywhere in about 30 minutes. Seb will talk more about Cardiff uh, and life here in, in a little bit. Um, but it's you can walk anywhere again in about 30 minutes. People are really friendly. The visa process, uh, if you will need one of those, which I did, was really simple. You fill out an online form through the UK government, the school was really quick to get me um, the required paperwork that I needed to fill out the visa application. They sent that just a few weeks after I got my acceptance and accepted um, uh, my, my student, my, my um, degree placement. Um, so, so the visa process was really simple. And then the other thing that I was worried about moving here was, of course, housing. <laughs> I've never lived in the UK before, so I didn't know where um, where I would be. And the college holds a space in their in their halls and their housing for all students. So it was really nice to know that I had a space there if I wanted to live there. I ended up going with private housing, uh, but it was nice to know I had that backup. So overall, I really love the degree. 
again, the pacing's really nice. The knowledge that you gain is, is really wide, but really specific. And being here as an international student has been, has been really easy. Thank you. Thanks so much, Nat. So next, I think we're moving on to Isaac. Hello, everyone. Um, I'm Isaac Hall, and I'm on the creative producing pathway. Um, so I'm also a full time student living in Cardiff. I did my undergrad at Cardiff Uni in English and history, and I've just come down the road down to Royal Wales. So I've been in Cardiff quite a few years, and it's great, would recommend it 100%. Mm -hmm. Um, so I came straight in from undergrad, straight into the Masters, um, which has been a really nice transition. It's not been too much of a leap up to, oh my goodness, it's Masters. It's money, you know, it's gone in nice and gently and getting all the skills that I need for that sense. Um, and the creative producing pathway is we do one module separate from the general arts managers. So it's not like you feel very connected to the whole group as a as a cohort as a class and we still do the we do a module on the creative sector and touring with everyone we do the finance modules with everyone the management and leadership modules we do with everyone um and then we do our creative producing module which was um one day a week where we had guest lecturers come in uh, from various people, places in the industry. We had people from the Wales Millennium Centre, Theatre Cloyd, and then we had freelancers such as Zoe Munn and Laura Drain, who are great people to get to talk to and not only talk to them and ask questions, but they led seminars, lectures with us where we got skills such as fundraising, budget management, bid writing, general producing, Kind of everything we need to go out into the world as a creative producer and we've used all that knowledge that we've gathered through those to put on a produce a piece or a project or whatever and mine uh was last week so it was really exciting to be able to put all the skills that we've learned into practice and i managed to collaborate with lots of different students within the college and that was really exciting getting to work with the actors the designers all this kind of thing really feels like you're part of really exciting school and place to work but also it felt very professional as well because we were using all the skills that we'd learnt. Um, I'm trying to think what else I got on my notes um, and yeah while we do our project um, as a creative producer we have a professional mentor uh, attached to us so we each have a, a mentor who is working in industry at the moment um, who is there to lend a hand, we're allowed six hours of contact with them. So if there's ever that moment of, oh, I'm producing something on my own, you know, I need that bit of guidance, that bit of help, the mentorship that's there, which is really, really handy. So we don't ever feel out of our depth, but also really, really exciting to have a professional producing contact there. And you can have conversations with them and really get over problems. And yeah, we so yeah, learning all through the autumn term on creative producing, we then put on our project in the spring term and then we write up an evaluation on how we have found it and all of that kind of thing. And then we also do the placements as well as a creative producer. So you don't miss out on any of the practical training and the, um, the going into industry. You just learn about fundraising and the audience development in a slightly different setting about more really practically putting it into place with the project but it's all still there you still you're not missing out on any of the learning any of the knowledge it's just delivered in slightly different ways but yeah would highly recommend creative producing it's been a really really fun change from what i did do and i'm really really enjoying it can't wait to see where it's going to take me next year in the future that's brilliant thanks so much isaac and uh, next, I think we're going to go to Sebastian. Hi there, I'm Sebastian. Uh, I'm a part time student in the second year, so I'm over halfway done. And uh, I'm going to talk about Cardiff as a place to be. Um, 
So I actually studied in Cardiff for my undergraduate, um, which was over in West Wales in Carmarthen. And I loved Wales as a place to be so much. Everyone was so friendly and I spent a lot of time in Cardiff then. Um, so I loved it so much that I came back here to study for my master's. Um, so prior to the course, I'd spent a few years uh, working as an actor and front of house in theatres. Um, just a bit of context for what I was doing before I started the course. So I'd taken a few years out. Uh, so Cardiff is a sort of medium-sized city and it's got everything you'd expect a city of that size to have but it's also the capital city of Wales so there's lots of national org organisations based here lots of national arts organisations which the college has links to as the National Conservatoire of Wales um, there's community venues like Chapter Arts Centre which puts on uh, different shows and then you've also got producing houses like the Sherman and large venues like the Wales Millennium Centre of course uh, and the new theatre and they get all the big shows coming in from around the, from around the country I was not saying around the world which is accurate do you sometimes get shows from uh, different countries there and on the music side of things we've got St David's Hall and the Motor Point Arena as well um, as a city it's fairly diverse uh, it's got a great LGBT scene um, and as I said, there's lots of arts venues, including the college, of course. There's always lots on at the college in terms of both music and drama and stuff you can get involved in as well. Uh, there's always lots to do uh, in the city, um, but I don't, I don't find it as overwhelming as uh, London is having lived there prior to studying. Um, it feels doable to, to actually go out and do things. Um, there's also lots of history, we're right next to the castle, and a great night out as well is Cardiff, if that is more your vibe. Um, as I said, it's there's lots of things to do around uh, Cardiff as well, so you're not far from the sea, you're not far from Barry if you love the beach, and also you're near the countryside, and we're right next to a big green space, Boot Park, which is lovely, and Cardiff's only two hours from London as well if you did need to get there. Um, so if you'd like to live in Cardiff, there's two options for accommodation. Uh, so there's the Halls of Re Residence, uh, which is uh, Seven Point. So the college has the sole use of Seven Point, which is about a 15 minute walk from the college. Uh, sorry, 15. I might have, might have sounded like 50. 15 minute walk from the college. Um, and this is currently £132 a week. And you sign a 43 week contract for that. So the room is yours during Christmas and Easter. So you don't need to worry about taking any stuff home with you. Um, uh, that does include all your bills, but obviously not food. Uh, that would have to be budgeted on top. Um, and then also, also you can uh, obviously privately rent, uh, which I think most people on the course are privately renting. Um, and that the rent depends on how many people you want to live with. Uh, it tends to be between three to four people and it's you're looking at about 300 to 400 pounds a month at the moment. Um, public transport in the city is really good. Uh, if you choose to commute there are car parks right next to the college uh, just a couple of minutes walk away a few of our classmates do commute um, and if you want to drive here and live here uh, bringing your car park your car there. bringing your car is a little bit more tricky because you can't park at the accommodation but um there's parking off-road um just around the corner by the nearby gym um in terms of food shopping there's a big tesco and a little which are walkable uh, if you can drive there's also an asda and a morrison's and um there's also a little tesco's uh, which is much closer to seven point and that's about it um i think are we going on to pip now Thanks, Deb. <laughs> nice segue there. So next person to chat is Pip. Hello, my name is Pip. I am going to talk a little bit about being a part-time student on the Arts Management course at the Royal Welsh College of Music and Drama. So I've chosen to study the MA Arts Management over two years, part-time, and it's really important to mention here that the course can be split over two, three, four, or five years. Uh, so if you feel that is an option for you, please find out more information about it. Um, but just to make you aware that I'm currently in my first year of two. 
So I thought I would start by giving you a little bit of background into my training up to this point. I completed my undergraduate degree in composition at the college in 2019. And throughout that degree, I had elected to complete several of the arts management and concert planning modules. I also completed a work placement in my fourth year, which enabled me to gain insight into music, law and management and the relationship between all three. And that's kind of scoped out where I want to be within the industry and has led me to here. So from college, I began teaching music technology and managing a recording studio as a technician in a secondary school near Bristol, uh, and that was full time. In 2021, I decided to apply to the college to study arts management after taking a step back and deciding on my next steps and where I wanted to be within my career. I'm so pleased that I made the leap uh, to focus on my career and to start working part time rather than full time. Uh, I'm still working in the same role, um, but I now attend college two days a week and I commute on these days from Bristol. It takes me around an hour, an hour and a half. So on a typical day in college, we often have two or three lectures. They can last anywhere from an hour to three hours. Um, and they often focus on the modules that both the part and the full-time students are completing. The students that are studying full-time complete each module in turn. And then where I'm due to complete some of these next year, this is time for me to catch up with my work towards my degree. Um, possibly some deadlines, also work towards my job. Um, it can sometimes feel quite different studying part-time and full-time, um, but I've really appreciated that my circumstances are respected um, by Karen, the course leader, and by the students on the course with me. I never feel out of the loop and I never feel that I'm taken less seriously because I'm studying part-time. I do keep myself really busy throughout the week and it's been really important to dedicate certain days and times to studying. Um, this is more for me uh, and, a, and a sort of personal way of managing my time. It, it means that I can work slowly and steadily in smaller chunks towards my coursework deadlines. Um, I would certainly say that the part time course is fully manageable whilst working. It's all about how you use your time, how you chunk down your time, um, but yeah, fully manageable. So I'm also one of the part-time representatives and I attend meetings with the Students' Union and external examiners to give feedback on course modules, lectures and other issues or points raised with me by fellow students. Uh, we have become a real support network for each other in such a short amount of time that we've known each other. I felt we really support each other in ways that feel exciting, they feel really new. Uh, we're open to learning and immersing ourselves in new experiences. I find the course incredibly insightful and relevant to the industry at the moment. Um, and I feel that I'm able to scope out my future goals in a way that suits my personal circumstances right now. But also I can see the next five to 10 years uh, through this course. Um, I'm so glad that I made the decision to apply. And I hope that with some of this information, it gives you the opportunity to do the same. The rest of the, the session is to be open for questions really. Um, so what I'm going to do in a moment is start by the questions we've had sent in and um, I'll either answer those questions or if the students don't mind I'll, I'll give the questions to you if they're relevant. So I'll read out the question first and then we'll decide who might best um, answer it. If you've got any other questions for us you can either send us um, a, a, a query in the chat by putting your question in the chat box and somebody will be monitoring that. Or you can raise your Zoom hand and we can we can chat about it when we finish looking at the ones that are on the spreadsheet that I've got. So hopefully that's okay for everybody. So I'll just lump straight in if I can find my spreadsheet. Bear with me, caller. Okay, so the first question, uh, I've got two questions in one, and the first one is about scholarships. And I think there's another question at the end about scholarships. So um, 
Essentially, as we're not a performance course, there aren't any scholarships attached to arts management study at the college. So if you're looking at college uh, scholarships generally on um, the information pages on, on the web, you'll find that they are linked to being a performer. But we do have an equal access policy at the college and everybody is entitled to apply for a bursary. It is means tested, but it means that um, it's open to anybody who applies and gets offered a place on one of our courses. So that's the situation with scholarships and bursary. So hopefully that was easy to answer. And the next question is about the weekly timetable. So um, I think, the students have answered that. Has anybody got anything else they feel they would like to add to the weekly timetable? Has anybody got any questions about part-time? Would one of our part-timers like to say about what days you come in on, on a part-time basis? Um, so yeah, so in first year I came in on a Monday and a Tuesday and in second year I come in on a Wednesday, although I've consistently come in on a Wednesday in second year, but in first year it was Monday and Tuesday term one, then term two I was in for a few uh, Tuesdays, I think, but there was a big report on placement, so um, there were other things to be doing, so I wasn't in as much on in uh, the second half of first year. So it's essentially two days a week if you're doing the course over two years on a part-time basis. And we ask you to free up four days a week if you are working on the full-time course over one year. And on a part-time basis, it flip-flops between Mondays and Tuesdays and essentially Wednesdays and Thursdays in terms of your contact time. And uh, next question is, can you apply for the creative producing pathway without prior experience in creative producing? as long as you have a strong interest in it and some general arts management experience. Isaac, what do you think about that? Well, yeah, I, I wouldn't have termed myself a creative producer by any means when I kind of applied. I had experience working, not work, um, for like student producing bits and pieces with uni drama societies and other bits and bobs like that around more of an amateur um, setting but I had a real passion for it and kind of willing to learn take on the information and I think yeah <laughs> I, I think, think there's a mix really isn't there in the producing yeah. term. there are some people who've had quite a few years experience producing work already and they might be people who are studying with us on a part-time basis anyway and they might be working in the industry outside of college. Um, and there are other people who've had no experience at all to those who've been um, at undergrad, either a member of a society or they may be writing stuff or they may be producing their own work in that way. So we've got quite a, quite a range of, of um, experiences before they come. And I think that, you know, what I, um, Isaac was saying earlier was that you get this toolkit of skills that you learn in the autumn term that, that you can then apply to a project in the spring term. So hopefully we would tool you up ready to be able to cope with the demands of producing your own work. Okay, the next one then is on creative producing, is it limited to producing theatre, musical theatre productions or other avenues to explore music events, immersive cross-disciplinary events, uh, film, TV, placements with festival providers, for example. Can you give some examples of graduate outcomes specifically from the creative producing path? Is there much time outside of teaching hours to produce our own events? Ooh, there are lots of things going on in that question. So I think probably three things in one and I'll try and answer them as best I can. Um, on the creative producing pathway, you produce your own work in the spring term. So what you do is very much dependent on your own needs, wants, desires. So if you were interested in doing a musical theatre production, then it would be your job to produce it and organise it. So um, you're only limited by the scope of the project that you outline um, and the availability of people and, and things like that. So you can choose to do your work outside of college. We're not we don't dictate how you do it. 
Um, Isaac talked about a project he was working on where he was able to harness all of the talent and expertise that we had across different departments in the college, but um, some of the other students are producing work outside. Um, one of them started her own small theatre company, another is producing um, a big public project up at Aberystwyth um, in partnership with some other stakeholders. So there's a wide range of opportunities there and you, you basically make them yourself. So it's, it's up to you what you're interested in. Uh, graduate outcomes. So in terms of creative producing, one of our producers last year went to work at Theatre Cloyd as an assistant producer there. Theatre Cloyd is up in North Wales. It's nearer to Manchester than it is to Cardiff, to be honest. So it has great links with the north uh, west of England and also down with London because it, it produces a lot of work that transfers into London. So um, if you don't know the venue and it's producing heritage, then um, look it up because it actually has got great pedigree there. So we've got one of our guys from last year who's working there. Um, we've had people go to work at Wales Millennium Centre as well in much more of an assistant producing role because um, it's a much bigger organisation. So they've got a team of people there. So we've had quite a few who've gone into those those roles. We've got one of our producers who is now working as a freelance uh, based in Bristol. So he works with a variety of size of organization and type of organization. And I think as a freelancer, you tend to pick up lots of different kinds of work. So that's what we're trying to um, upskill you in when, when you're working in the autumn on our, on our producing lectures is to try and get you to understand the wide range of work that you could be doing when you're out there because a lot of people work freelance in in the business so um, I think that's people from over the last couple of years in terms of creative producers so I'll, I'll come back to it if I can think of any more and is there much time outside of teaching hours to produce your own events perhaps in society so does one of the students want to tackle that question how much time do you think you have outside of the course to do your own work? I, I can jump in. Um, oh, Isaac, I just saw you unmute too. Um, yeah, so I I am full time, but I also I do have a part time job, and um, especially in the fall, uh, before you have most of your assessments due, you do have time. Like I went up to Liverpool one weekend. And, and like I have plenty of time to work. The spring has been a bit more demanding just because you have the placement, you have some assessments due from the fall and new classes that you've also started, but still in no way do I feel like I can't work or I can't travel or I can't, you know, participate in societies or anything like that. Isaac, did you wanna add on? Well, yeah, I was just with, in terms of yeah, producing your kind of own work outside of the course, there are lots of things within college that can enable that. There is a drama society in college that does um, performance and things like that. And there's also RepCo, which is an initiative within college, which can give support and funding to uh, student-run, student-led productions of any kind. It's really, really open to give the freedom to students to create and do what they want to do um, using all students within college. So it's very much more student-based, but it's very much your own work. Um, and that is open for everyone. There's, it, there's a season in autumn, a season in spring and a season in summer. So you can, if you had a desire to produce your own work, there is, you can look at kind of your timetable or your modules and work out, oh, okay, I'm gonna have a lighter kind of autumn term. I think maybe that would be a good time to produce my own work before it gets a bit more intense as we move towards the placements or there's certainly time to, although my project was part of the course, I certainly felt like I had lots of time to be able to rehearse, produce. Um, so there is lots of time to do whatever you want. I think the, uh, just to add to what Isaac said there, the Repco opportunity is a great one to mix with people from right across the college on all different courses. And it gives you a taste of, um, you know, applying for funding, getting supported for a project and then running a project. So as well as that kind of ability to mix with lots of other um, disciplines and artists, um, you get to like create your own work in an environment that's non, not judged. And also it's a very supported environment, but it's very entrepreneurially led by the students. It's not something that the, the um, lecturing staff get involved with at all. 
Let's move on then. So the next question is quite an interesting one. It says, with the current uh, unstable landscape in the arts, is it a good time for me to try and break into arts management? Um, the first thing I would say is that we've all been through a difficult time, but actually some of our students coming through the programme right in the middle of the pandemic last year, um, you know, you'd think that that was a, a really tricky time to try and get work once they'd finished, but everybody on the course who graduated last year all secured jobs before they graduated in December. So um, I think that's testament to the training and the way that we prepare our students for industry, but also to the fact that there is work out there. There is in fact a lot of work out there in the UK for arts managers at the moment. The problem that companies um, have got in industry is that they don't have the quality of people who are applying. So there's now probably two or three years worth of graduates from undergraduate level trying to get jobs, but they don't have experience and they don't have the, um, the skills, let's say, or the tools to be able to just hit the ground running when they go into a job. And that's very much what separates our students out from others. And we get this reported back from industry all the time that our students are, you know, leagues ahead of some of the other students that are interviewed for jobs. So I think that's why our students are successful, because we're training them in a way that's very current and giving them that industry experience to put on their CV. So hopefully that answers that question. Uh, next one is, to what extent does an applicant's undergraduate degree make a difference to their application? So I will answer that one then. It makes no difference at all what undergraduate degree you've done before you come to us. I mean, two of the most bizarre ones we've had was marine biology and Viking studies in the past 10 years when I've been um, head of the course. So um, we, we are not biased towards anybody. Um, we're not biased if you've had a performing arts background. We're not, we're not wanting people who've only worked in industry. We want to get a really good mix um, in our cohorts because it leads to really good debate, sharing of ideas and skills and resource. And really we're, we're trying to see at interview somebody's passion for working in the sector and their passion for either being an orchestra manager or a producer or for having a general arts management career so that's what we're trying to to get to the nub of when we're interviewing you rather than you've got to have a specific background in in a particular area okay next one i think i that's for me to answer as well any chance there would be online classes um, that's from somebody in Switzerland. Um, we're not a course that is a distance learning course. Um, as a conservatoire, it's very much about immersing yourself in the experience of being in a, a drama and a music school. So um, whilst we have had to offer um, some kind of online training through COVID and we have picked up some of our really good points of learning from that experience and brought that into the course. So um, being able to zoom in some, you know, high level people from companies who are based elsewhere in the country who wouldn't normally get on a, uh, a train and travel to us. We've been able to harness that by bringing them into the classroom on a virtual basis. We've got no plans to run um, uh, a distance learning course in the future because we're very much about being present, being in the moment. Um, it's not just about learning, you know, what we're doing in arts management. It's about that whole experience of being in a conservatoire setting and that, you know, that meeting other people, that serendipity of being in the right place and, you know, starting your own company with people that you've got like minded ideas with. So that's part of the experience for us. So, um, as I say, we've got no plans to change that. Um, are placements allocated on a random basis or do students need to apply for a placement? Would anybody like to talk about the process of the spring and the summer placements? I can do. <laughs> okay, um, you do the autumn and then somebody, sorry, you do the spring one that you apply for in the yeah. autumn and then someone else can do the summer one. So the spring one, as it's a slightly smaller placement, the application process is there's still an application process but it's less serious and um professional there's not much to do for it we'd have to we have to write a kind of rationale as to why we want we pick three placements our favorite three and we write a rationale as to why 
we think that placement would be good for us, what we think we can get from the placement, um, why we would like to do that placement. And then we all get together in a room um, with the placements that we want. And we really try and work in a collaborative way with all of the cohort to try and get everyone a place, one of their three placements that they all want. Um, and luckily we've all ended up with placements that we all wanted, so it works. So <laughs> mad as it sounds, it works, that one. So the, the point of the exercise in doing that big open discussion that Isaac described is so it's part of our leadership and management training as well. So it's about learning those skills about being generous in a room, working collegiately and collaboratively with people, spotting about when people um, need support with things, um, arguing your own case, all of those kind of um, skills that you require in negotiating and, and dealing with situations come into play. Sometimes it's easier than others, um, but we, we get there in the end. Natalie, would you like to talk a little bit about how the summer one works? That's slightly different. Sure, absolutely. Yeah. So um, the summer one, we actually just all turned in our, uh, our three uh, requests for the summer, you might call it. And I think this year, Karen, correct me if I'm wrong, we had 36 to choose from. Yeah. Yeah, we had so many to choose from. Um, and basically what you do is you kind of take a moment, several moments, in fact, to think about what you still would like to learn. What are the gaps that need to be filled? And you can take three of the 36 options that we had, uh, the top three, and um, see which placement you think you could fit on and which would fill those gaps. You write a personal statement about what you would still like to learn. And then kind of similar to the spring, you write reasoning for each of those three placements, why you think that would be a good fit. And then because it's 180 hours compared to 90 hours in the spring, uh, Karen works with the placement options uh, to kind of place us where, um, where would be the most beneficial for us and for the partners. So that's a process we've just been going through and it's only today that the team had a meeting at lunchtime to look at which placements would be best suited to which students and we've made the decisions and contacted all the placement hosts today. Some have already come back literally within hours saying, yes, please, um, I'd like to meet that person. Or they say, yes, please, we'll take that person, but just tell them to get in touch anyway. So the kind of relationship we've built with our partner organizations is that they trust our judgment when we're trying to match students to the placements. And every year, um, everyone gets at least one that's on their list and I think that hopefully fingers crossed everyone's going to be very happy with the placement they've been allocated this year so the the one that's in the spring just to sum up what people were saying there it's very much the students decide between themselves where they're going to go based on the list that they've got of their choices and they all share their choices with each other in the summer one they submit their choices a bit like applying for a job and then we try to match the right kind of provider for the, um, the skills that they feel they've got the gaps in or where the direction that they would like their career to go in. So that's that one. So getting to the last few, and then I can see there are a couple on the screen. Uh, approximately how many hours of contact time a week? I think that we've answered that one. Um, there is a little caveat on the end there saying, is it a particularly intense or content he content heavy course. So guys, what do you think? Is it a particularly intense course? I don't think Somebody so. Full time, full time yeah. Natalie, you go for full time. Is it particularly? Great. Yeah. No, no, I wouldn't say, I would say you learn a lot and you learn it quickly, um, but I wouldn't say it's intense in a negative way. It's intense in the amount that you get. It's intense in, um, really pre preparing you for the real world, um, but in, in, intense in a very positive way. Should we use the word immersive instead? Immersive, of let's use that word, yeah. <laughs> Seb, what do you think over two years? I know that Pip said earlier, it's completely doable when working. How do you feel the workload is over two years? Intense? No, no, it's not. I mean, I chose to do it over two years because I, I know how I learn and I, 
like to I like to be immersive but I know that I can't have too much of that <laughs> <laughs> so I but I I've it's been completely fine over two years I mean I it's been either two days a week or one day a week um that I've been really working and I've been able to work alongside it and do other things completely fine so yeah okay thank you very much great. Um, I think that's the end of the, the questions I've got on the spreadsheet. So I'm going to go to the ones I can see in the chat, if that's all right. And then, Kate, if you shall push any others that you've got. Marshall. Hi again, Marshall. What's the difference between the general um, management and the creative producing pathway? And do students sometimes switch as they discover their interests? Um, difficult to switch, unfortunately, because it's only a one year course and we ask people to nominate what they're interested in prior to applying and we make offers based on that. So we offer as though we're offering them one pathway. If you came in within the first two weeks and discovered that you were completely on the wrong course, then we could switch you then, but not later in the year, because um, a lot of the learning is upfront on the course because we're only with you for a year or you're only with us for a year. So if you make the decision very, very quickly, yes, we can look at it. But once we're sort of halfway through the term, it's not really that possible because of the way that the learning has already happened and you've already had like two halfway modules, et cetera, et cetera. The main difference between the general management and creative producing is that on the creative producing, as Isaac said, you're really focusing on honing your skills to be a producer in the future. Whereas in the arts management one, you're keeping your options a little bit broader. Um, we find that some people come in and they're not quite sure what their interests are or where they want to go. So we basically say, be like a sponge, come and do the general course and mop it all up. And then you can make some decisions either as you're going through the course or towards your placement and then going out into industry, what you're interested in. And we often find that people come in, um, well, there's a few different um, scenarios. People come in with a definite idea of where they're going and then they completely change tack when they come in because they learn so many new things. We have people who uh, come in and stay true to that goal of where they're gonna go. Or we have people who come in and have no idea where they want to go and they might say I'm really not interested in something like fundraising, for instance, and then we find that by the end of the course they've decided they want to be a fundraiser. So actually that happened last year and four of our graduates last year, right at the, if you'd asked them at the beginning of the course, none of them would have wanted to be a fundraiser and four of them went into fundraising roles when they graduated. So um, I think it's about being open on the general management uh, course and being much more focused on the creative producing one so the people who tend to go for creative producing it's because that's what they're interested in for a future career that's why they choose it and the same in in orchestral management as well hopefully that answers your question um the next one i've got then is how many people do you take on the full-time course each year in other words how competitive is it so we probably take about 40 percent of people who apply each year um, so I suppose as a conservatoire, it is quite competitive compared to some other courses. You might find some other MAs that are more theory based in the UK will offer you a place without even interviewing you. You can do it online and just get offered a place by tapping in some information to them. We like to meet everybody and we like to see that not only are you the right person to join the conservatoire, but are we the right course for you? because we're very much about what we can do to help you on your way in your career. It's not about just getting people through the door and teaching them something. So um, there's gotta be a, a good match there. Um, so that's why we'd like to interview everybody and meet everybody. And as I say, what we're looking for at interview is that you really are very keen to have a career in this side of the business. You may have been a performer or a player, and you've decided that that's not for you and you want to keep doing that, but, you know, either as a part time job or as a hobby, and then you want to look at other areas, you know, that will supplement your career or to move into. Um, so we're interested in people who are wanting to do that. Um, we're interested in people who want to make their own work. We're interested in the change makers of tomorrow. That's the kind of thing that we're looking for. Um, uh, at interview with our people. Um, we take at the moment 20 people on the course um, each year, but um, it's split as well. So some people um, are going down their different pathways. So some classes you might have all together. 
and some classes you'll have in your separate pathway depending on what you're studying so you might find you're in a class of six or seven for some things you might find you're in a class of 18 for other other um, classes but we're we're a small college we don't have massive lecture rooms or anything like that it's very seminar based um, and we can't get more than about 20 people in a room. So that's the limit of what, what we tend to have. Um, any other questions from anybody, Kate? Um, none in the chat um, so far. So if anyone has got any more, do very, if you can type them, type them very quickly. Yeah, or you can um, shout out, please talk to yes. me. So Marshall, you got your hand up, got in there quickly. Thank you, everyone, for your information. It's just really nice to have some students explain their experience. It gives a really good face to the program. I wanted to ask about the, the visa process. Natalie talked about that a little bit. I'm also coming from Georgia, so we're kind of neighbors. Um, but uh, what is the process, say, if you wanted to stay on for a year? You find some uh, organization, you really love working, the work you're doing, you you want to maximize what you can do with that organization going forward. Do you have any experience with that or any knowledge about that? And maybe also briefly about 20%, you might talk about what it's like to find private housing. Yeah, sure. Um, so they just started this really cool thing here and I haven't gone through this process. Uh, so I can't talk much about it, but if you graduate as a, um, as someone on a student visa, if you graduate with your degree, you can convert it to a two-year work visa. So you would be able to stay on. Um, that's my current plan, because I also am kind of like, why would I just come over here for a year when I can be here for three? Um, so yeah, so that is an option for you uh, as of now, unless things change, which I don't think they will, but that is definitely an option. And is that visa tied to the organization or is that like a visa that you that you're allowed to have, and then you go to the organization and say, I have the right to work. Is that how my understanding yeah. of it is? Right. I believe it's the latter. Yeah, I believe right. it's the latter where, where it's just your right. work visa and you can kind of apply to whatever jobs you and, see fit. Do you know what the, the, the time of that is? Is that like a one year thing or? Or, I believe, okay. sorry, I'm sorry, I'm Stephen, I work in admissions. Um, okay. I believe it's called a graduate route visa. So you, it's a two years after two years. completing your studies. So yeah, that's okay, something great. that you can look at applying for once you've completed. Wonderful. Thank you. You've answered that question. No worries. Okay. And I'm sorry. Oh, oh, I'm sorry. What was the, did you have a second? Just part? private housing. Uh, just oh, their sure. experience with that real briefly. Yeah, yeah, just super fast. Um, I, in halls, um, you are sharing a kitchen space. Uh, so you have your own private bedroom and bathroom, but you share the kitchen and living room space. And um, I am um, a more mature student um, age-wise. So I did not want to um, take part in that. Uh, so what I did was I basically looked at Google Maps and mm -hmm. searched student housing. I also know um, that there is, there will be a Facebook group. I saw a lot of this happening, a Facebook group for incoming students as well as current students. And a lot of people post in there about, hey, we need somebody to fill this room or hey, I'm looking for roommates. And then they'll use some sort of, and said maybe you can touch on this too. They'll use some sort of um, uh, like real estate agent kind of thing to kind of get them into a, a rented house. But for me, I'm, I'm, I'm still in student housing, but it's privatized because I wanted kind of a studio space. Um, but yeah, Google Maps, Facebook groups, that's the way to go. And you source that yourself. Yeah, exactly. Okay, great. Wonderful. Uh, Thank you. The college and the college does run a find a friend scheme to help you find flat and housemates to make sure you're living with people you like. <laughs> Thank you. Okay, hopefully that's answered your question, Marshall. Are there any other people wanting to ask a question while we're here? Yes, Joanna. Yeah, I just like to ask um, if you've put one of the pathways on UCAS and then you change your mind prior to arriving or prior to being interviewed, is that okay? That's absolutely fine, Joanna. Just chat to us about it at interview. Um, we make the, um, the offer based on what we've talked about at interview. So um, if we know you've applied for one particular pathway and that you've thought, oh, actually, as a result of X, I, I'd like to change that, just let us know. It's easy peasy. Any other questions? 
Well, I think we're bang on time in terms of where we're supposed to be. So if that's everything, can I firstly thank all of our uh, students for joining us today and giving us all the insights that they've given into both being a student on the course, being a student in the college and living in Cardiff. That's been great. Thanks so much. Thank you to the staff as well for joining us and hosting and helping out here. And then lastly, thank you all for joining us to learn a little bit more about what it's like to, to study arts management at the Royal Welsh College of Music and Drama. If you haven't applied yet and you're interested in applying, then please do. You can always get in touch with us and have an informal chat again if you needed to. Um, don't think it's very much a one-way street. It's not at all. We're very open and friendly people and we like to chat to people about what they want to do with their careers. So um, come and chat to us if you need to. If you've already applied, um, then we look forward to seeing you at interview. If we've already met you at interview, then um, you may get your offers, um, hopefully, fingers crossed, in the coming weeks. Um, but again, everybody is very free to come and chat to us at any time. We're, we're very open to answering questions and queries as we go through the process of you um, joining us. Um, in the future. So things like if you've had an offer and then you've got queries about accommodation and things like that, Stephen's team is, is really approachable and can help you in that area. So all there is uh, for me to say now is uh, thank you very much for joining us today. Diolch Gid, and I hope you have a very lovely evening. Thanks so much. Or afternoon, depending on where you are. <laughs> Goodbye. Thank you for your time.